Welcome to another episode of The Pursuit of Coconuts, where we are establishing a social enterprise and focused on this aquaponic farm at the moment. In this episode, we are finishing up one of the ponds and some of the planters, and we're going to be able to cycle the system to see if it works and to continue on building the rest. Before we get to that, we have to make sure that the land is secure, that there's not going to be any movement. With all the rain that we've gotten and the construction and the movement of the excavators, we wanted to build this rip raft, which is a retaining wall. And so we've got a base of cement that we will be piling local rocks that we've quarried from the top of our property. So that way we can keep everything as ecologically local as possible. And we're going to stack these up with cement and rebar that will create this retaining wall for the safety and strength of our farm. So the first wall, uh, we used a lot of the rocks. Actually, all the rocks came from up top here. So it's on this property. They literally mined it and kind of took a jackhammer, dug it all out from the top, carried them all down by hand, fit them together, jackhammer, piece them all together. So that way it looks really good. And then in between, they literally stuffed everything with mud. Um, so that way plants can grow in between. It's looking amazing. So now that the land is secured, we're going to feel a lot better about putting water in our planters and our pond and uh, getting everything going here. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to finish the top off just to make it real smooth and uh, real clean. Um, we've got the electrical going at the same time and we are here today to work on the plumbing too. So I'm going to take a look at that. We're going to try out one of the uh, planters that was painted just to see if there's any leaks and go from there. All right, so these planters are painted and they should be cured by now. So I'm going to try to fill one of these up to see how they work and see if they leak. We covered our planters with tarp because it's raining season and we wanted to make sure that the waterproofing sealant that we applied didn't get affected by the rain. This is a tricky one. We chose a barrier, water barrier, that was made for ponds. And so we were looking for something that would not affect chemically the water, the fish, and the plants. And so later on you'll learn that this probably wasn't the best one to use. The other option is to line the planters and the pond with pond liner, which I think in the future is going to be the best option for a couple reasons. One being that it will not have any leaching from the concrete or whatever we use as a water barrier. Two, the Philippines is known as an earthquake prone area. So with the movement of the land, it'd probably be best that we don't get any cracks in the concrete and the planters and in the pond. And that with the barrier that we would be able to use a rubber lining, that we would have some give to the movement that might be caused by an earthquake. So these are the perfect height where you can just work on it without bending backwards. And from one end, you can reach the middle. So that way you can walk around and get a full harvest without having to make it so difficult. So that's the reason why we made it this size and height. And the depth just correlates with the, the water volume that comes in from the pond. Looking good. All right, we'll see. There's a lot of hairline cracks in here, but I don't know if that's just the way that it cured or if it'll be sealed. The waterproofing adhered to the cement really well. It's actually a cement-based one. In some of the planters, it actually was cracking and that might have been the change of temperature. And so we had to scrape some of it, repair some of it and patch it, and then reapply some more of the water barrier. So after the waterproofing, we increased the height of the pipes so we can fill the planters with water to see if there's any leaks and test to see if everything would drain properly once it was pulled. And so here we are testing it out. There's no leaks right now and I don't think there will be because we painted that one a couple times. We're going to finish the pond up and then we're going to start adding the supply line. So all the drain lines are looking good on this side. So once these planters are held together, tested, the pond will get filled up. The pond will pump the water into the planters. The planters will then start to cycle and we'll be able to cycle these planters and ponds for about five to six weeks. So that way we can get it primed to be able to put some fish in there possibly. That's going to be exciting. I don't know when that's going to happen exactly, but let's just focus on one thing at a time, and that is getting the supply line to the pond, to the planters. Another step is how do we fill the planters? And this was a little bit tricky. 
we had some plumbers come in and we actually cycled through two or three plumbers that didn't understand that the pressure of the water had to be distributed properly to every single planter so that way they can fill up at the same time. And that depends on how far and how strong the pumps are. So the calculations had to be made. I actually had to step in and train the team on all of that. So I measured, cut, placed everything and just had the team assemble it all and got rid of the plumber that we had. And this is a learning process that I had to learn. So usually in the United States, we would just have a solvent and glue to put the pipes together. But over here, uh, for the thicker, stronger pipes, we actually welded or melted the seams together with this little contraption here. So once it's melted, it cools and binds and becomes as solid as a one piece of pipe. Finally installing the supply lines. And so pretty much we're trying to have the same equal distance all the ponds within four feet of each other so that the pressure is evenly distributed. Then we'll finally adjust it with the valve. This pond is going to supply five planters and then after that we can bury most of the pipes on this side and get testing. We're looking good. These guys are doing a great job. And now we've got the idea on how the water is going to disperse. We wanted to make sure that it filled the planters up evenly and so what we created was a French drain type of plumbing in the middle. So we've got a big pipe that we just cut thousands of slits into so that way the water falls into there and spreads out. And this is because even if we had rocks all over the place and some plants grew good root systems into those rocks, that could really block the way that the water travels within the planter since the planters are about 20 feet long. So we have this French drain in the middle that is homemade, pretty much these pipes that we cut into and that helps disperse the water evenly into the planters. So with the return system of the water, what we did was we created valves from the pump to be able to control the pressure and each planter also has a valve and that way we can slowly adjust each planter so that way they all rise at the same time when they're filled with water. And also it works as a double mechanism where the water moving creates oxygen and that helps oxygenate the water for the fish also. So this French drain spreads out the water perfectly. And then we've got here a two inch pipe in the middle of a six inch pipe. And the six inch pipe blocks the rocks from going into the two inch pipe. And that two inch pipe is the drain that goes down. So if the water is coming here and it starts to come up and gets too high, the water flows too much, it'll pour into here and it'll stay at exactly 12 inches. So we can control the water and the height of the water in the ponds exactly what we need. This is the first one here that's uh, pretty much complete on the inside. We're gonna, of course, paint it, make it look pretty and do all that other stuff. But we wanted to get to this point here so that way we can start cycling the water. So I'm gonna go install the pump. So you might be wondering what kind of pumps we're using. We're not using aquarium pumps, we're actually using sewage pumps. And the reason why I did that was because the pressure was gonna be strong and also if anything got caught up in it, the blades would cut it all up just in case a fish got caught, it would not jam the system. And the other reason is that it was readily available, the cost was good, and it gave enough pressure to the system that it can disperse the head pressure was good, so we went with something that we knew we can get repaired if it went out, that's readily available, and that is strong enough for what we're looking for, and that can stand everyday use. This is the first time we're gonna be cycling this water through the supply line that we just finished installing. This is a pressure relief valve, and then we've got five planters that this submersible pump pumps into the two-inch pipe, and it goes out to five planters, and this is the setup to cycle the water here. So this is the first time in Isla Eden's history that we're gonna be running one of these. And if this works, we finally, finally get to cycle one set and see how this operates. And this could be the start of something new in the Philippines. I just sat down with the Congresswoman of this district and she says that there's been a lot of talks and nobody has done this. So we are officially on the board with the government known to be the first ones to do what we're doing here today. It's gonna be historical guys. So let's plug it in guys. Ready? Yeah. All right. How's this? It's looking good. And it looks like there's not even an increase and the flow is going real well. That's gonna be more than enough. And that actually doubles up as oxygenators. So every time it turns on, it creates oxygen for the fish. And these are the outlets for it to drain. So once this reaches height, it'll start draining. And doubles. 
Wow. So look at the pressure, it's pretty good in all of them. Yeah. It's about the same. Congrats, guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yay! I had to celebrate. This was huge. The water looked so cool and also everything was running pretty well. So I just wanted to jump in and let these guys know that I appreciate their hard work and their consistency and their just willingness to learn something new. We are now ready to test out and build the aquaponic system, throwing in some ammonia, some rocks, and getting everything dialed in so that way we can see if it works and the plants grow, and then we will go from there. So can't wait to see you guys on the next episode. The next episode is going to be the true tests if things will live in what we have built. Thank you for following the pursuit of coconuts as we build our first aquaponic farm in the Philippines and also tap into the agricultural community to build a global brand of products that will support local farmers and families and the livelihood of those involved.